All right, we're all set to go. This is a Boot Camp Module 5 webinar. Boot Camp Module 5 is called Search Engine Assault, and it is all about building links to your site and how to use some little tricks and tools, and um, in particular, the uh, content stacking method that we use to get links built for us automatically doesn't mean that you're not going to have to do any manual work as far as you know submitting some articles or building some links manually on relevant sites in your niche but it will help you uh, if you follow the process in bootcamp module 5 and the one RSS feed to rule them all it will help you gain more links over time to your individual post pages without actually having to go out and, and do <coughs> an insane amount of manual link building to each of your individual post pages. I hope you guys noticed, uh, if you go to the main page, you will see that there is a post up when it loads. <laughs> uh, that the software, the Spider Snare software is now available and uh, that will help you also get some links to your site. Only use that, I'm going to, I put it in the video but I'm going to repeat it here also. You only want to use the Spider Snare software when, um, for your main URL. You don't want to use that for your sub pages or for subdomains or for sites like, you know, a Squidoo lens or something that you created. This is just for your main domain. And where it submits to, you can see the list when you open the Spider Snare software, but it submits to um, sites like Alexa and several others that basically maintain a list of other sites on the internet and tell what they're about or something based on title tags and stuff like that. <clears throat> so the Spider Snare software will quickly submit to all of those types of sites for you and as you saw in the video when I did it it took about you know all of five seconds to put in my URL and hit submit so you know this is one of those things and we talked about it a little bit um, yesterday on the mastermind call but I want to repeat it here as well link building isn't about one particular piece of software being the answer to everything or one particular type of link building like article directories or like social media links or something like that being the end all be all answer to your link building because one of the things that Google looks for when it looks at the links that you have for your site one of the things that Google looks for is that you have a wide variety of links coming into your site so if you only have links say coming in from the types of sites that spider snare submits to or if you only have links coming in from article directories or if you only have links coming in from social media properties Google knows that you are attempting to manipulate your ranking and they don't like that now I'm not saying that you can't get away with it at times because you certainly can. That being said, best practices, my recommendation, what will get you the highest ranking and therefore get you the most traffic and therefore get you the most money is if you follow the process inside Bootcamp Module 5 which will help you develop lots of links from lots of different sources and having lots of different sources for links, different URLs, different kinds of sites gives you the most natural backlink profile possible and that is an important factor in your ranking. Other thing I want to kinda uh, talk about is PR. Don't worry about PR so much if you go to a blog and you you know you find it say in the snooper tool it's in your niche and it ranks highly a few times and so therefore it comes up at the top of the snooper tool when you run your keywords through it you should be leaving a link on it even if this site uses no follow no follow is not um, well, first of all, I mean, nofollow, the name itself is a misnomer. Nofollow does not mean that the search engines will not follow those links. So a nofollow link can get your site indexed, absolutely. The common perception is that if you add nofollow onto a link, that no page rank, no link juice will be passed on to that URL, and that is incorrect. Link juice is passed through no follow links. Particularly with the changes that Google has made, now they're, they've seen a lot of SEOs go through um, some really ridiculous lengths 
to use nofollow to do what's called page rank sculpting. And now the nofollow is even uh, less relevant in terms of worrying about it when you're getting your links. So I don't want you to consider nofollow as an issue because it's not. Yes, a nofollow link does not carry as much weight as a regular link. Uh, nonetheless, if you spend all of your time worrying about no follow, worrying about pay rank and all that stuff, you're not actually out there doing the work that needs to be done to get your sites to rank. You're out there worrying about stuff that really doesn't have as much relevance as um, some people would lead you to believe. And that's part of the problem with the SEO industry and some of that has trickled down into internet marketing is that SEO can be looked at as a very, very technical field, right? I mean, you know, it's all these algorithms and computations and all this kind of stuff. But the basics, the principles, aren't that hard to understand. You put good content on your page. You optimize your page with your, say, title, meta keywords, meta description, stuff like that, so that the search engines know what the site's about. And then you go out and you get links to your site. And that's SEO in a nutshell, you know, and of course you don't want to get all of your links from, say, porn sites or something, you know, that's that's a bad idea, that's bad neighborhood kind of stuff. Of course you don't want, um, you know, all of your links, say, to come from nofollow sites or something like that, or all of your links to come from article directories. But there's a lot of people out there who make their living by making SEO seem a lot more complicated than it is. And um, I won't say that, that some of the things that are taught aren't true um, as far as say no follow or you know duplicate content. What I will say is that uh, the 99% of the time those things are not true to the point that you or I as a normal person building normal sites needs to worry about. And us wasting our time worrying about that kind of stuff and paying these magical SEO gurus, you know, to explain all of this stuff to us is really just a way for them to make money and to stop us from making money because we're afraid. Uh, there's a lot of fear-based marketing in the industry as a whole, in SEO in particular, of course, and I don't want you to be afraid. Go out there, put some content out there, and build some links. And you see through Bootcamp Module 5 that the majority of the process for building links is pretty simple. You know, you're going to find out. Let's go to the snooper. And we'll do this for John Lennon sunglasses. We're going to find out what the sites are that Google likes the most, and then we're going to go and we're going to build some links on them, right? So let's put in John Lennon sunglasses. And this is a totally weird niche and I don't even know if there will be anything as far as like blogs out there about Lennon sunglasses that I can leave links on. Unlikely, but let's take a look anyway. I'll do Aussie too. Now what I'm doing here, uh, as you saw in Bootcamp Module 5, I'm putting in 1, 2, I've got 4 so far. I'd like to get, you can put up to 10, and I'd like to get at least 10 in here. Um, let's give that a whirl. So it's going to go through and search this information out for us and we'll see if there are any sites that come up several times. And what this is doing, it's telling us which sites Google thinks is most important in our niche as a whole as opposed to just over one keyword. I could go search for John Lennon sunglasses in Google and get the same information that I'm going to get in this row right here, but this compiles it all together so I can see what's most important in my niche as a whole. So let's expand that. Overall URL frequency gogglesandglasses.com so let's check them out sells high speed sunglasses at low speed prices oh we've been to this site before I don't believe that this site has a blog um, sometimes if you go to like, oh, they do, see here, sometimes a lot of um, storefront type of sites like this will have a blog on their back end somewhere, and generally blogs accept comments. It's on Blogspot, which kind of sucks, but anyway, so I could leave a comment on this site. I now know 
uh, that I have a link, even though it isn't directly from their main URL, this is a sub URL of them, but that I've got a link from a site that is regarded as an expert in my niche. Were I to leave a link on that site, of course. Um, articles base. So I'd take one of my spun articles and I would submit it to articles base. I don't know what lookbook.nu is. Let's find out. And also, guys, um, while I'm kind of going through some of this stuff here, uh, in this webinar, I'm not going to go through every single step that we did in the videos because, first of all, it would take a little bit too long than we have uh, on time for a webinar, but also because uh, it's all pretty self-explanatory. You know, you find the sites that are important in your niche and then you build links on them right and I gave you several examples of that in the videos but uh, if you do have specific questions go ahead and put them in the questions box and we will go from there so this site lookbook.nu it looks like it's a blog yeah it's got comments and whatnot so like this how would I leave a comment that isn't super duper spammy um, and I'd want to do it if possible on a recent post because um, that's going to be at the top of the site as you saw it's on the main page so I would say something like um, those you know I'd be uh, Michelle at John Lennon sunglasses or something would be my name and then I'd put in my URL and then be like you know those glasses are pretty sweet I actually like that they're a little bit more square shaped than your typical John Lennon sunglasses but um, you know, but they're a little pricey for me or something like that. I'm contributing to the conversation. I'm actually referring back to what was in this post, right? So uh, don't be spammy. Don't be a jerk. Same rules in the internet as there are in real life, right? So here's another site that came up several times. How many was this one? This one's still coming up four times. That's quite a few. So let's take a peek here. These guys have a store, other brands, information, sunglasses and fashion of the 70s and 80s, press releases. I don't see a blog specifically. The other thing that you can do, and I kind of uh, glossed over this in the um, boot camp webinars, but you know, you'll see a lot of sites, or sorry, in the boot camp videos, but you'll see a lot of sites nowadays have stuff like this where it's, you know, all of their different links where you can reach them. So you could actually go to somebody's Facebook page, which is a, um, oh wow, you can't see their page? That's lame. So they've done their page like morons, but nonetheless, um, pages should be visible whether you're logged into Facebook or not. So maybe it's actually a profile instead of a fan page. So these people are Egypts, but regardless, uh, if they had their fan page set up properly, then you would be able to go to it and you could actually leave them a message on their fan page and link to your site on that. And you can do that sometimes with a lot of the different social properties here. Uh, so that's something to consider as well. Like they've got a Squidoo. Uh, Squidoo wants me to log into. Anyway, you get the point. You can use their social properties also instead of just their blogs to get links. So that's something else that you should be looking at with these sites. Uh, let's see, eyeglasses.com. That's got to be a good one. Don't know if we'll be able to leave comments on it, but here's. We're just going to go through this though so that you guys can kind of see what you want to look for on these sites. And there are their actual brands that they carry. Returns, terms of use, sitemap. Looks like these guys don't have a blog, but we can find them on Facebook and possibly leave a comment or a message on their Facebook page. Oh, fashion blog, bingo. Pro golfers wearing eyewear. Zero comments, post a comment. There you go. That's how to do it. So were I to go through this process for the John Lennon sunglasses, I'd be able to get a bunch of links for my site that are super duper relevant, specific, important to my niche and that Google already considers as important sites in my niche. And then let's take a look at the top social media properties. 
last 90 days. YouTube coming in at the top. We're not dealing with the video sites right now. Um, easy in articles, Blogspot, Hub Pages, Articles Based, Yahoo Answers, Associated Content, Squidoo, WikiHow, Facebook, uh, WordPress.com. Wow, they've dropped a lot. They used to be a lot more popular. Article Snatch, PR Log, Answer Bag, MySpace. All these sites are sites that Google ranks highly and consistently over and over and over again. And these are the articles that I, I mean, sorry, these are the websites that I want to take my spun articles and place them on them. Period. That's how you get links. Uh, thanks for the spider snare, says Robert, and so does Teresa. Um, I'm looking at some of the uh, questions here. Jack, good question, Jack. Michelle, I understand we need lots of links, but at what rate do we get the links from all the diverse places? Most of the link guys tell us to do it slowly. It seems like a lot of the linking occurs rather quickly that you've outlined. Any feedback? Yeah, this is another one of those things that people like to tell you, oh, don't, don't build links too quickly, you'll get banned. Uh, again, to make SEO seem a lot more complicated than it is. If you go out and you put up a brand new website and a week later you go out and you use some automated software to build a thousand links to it overnight, yeah, that's weird, right? It's not natural. But what we're doing here and the process that we outline inside Crowd Mountain, even if you completed it all in a day, you didn't get a thousand links overnight. Google isn't even going to find all of the links that you do get. Let's say that you put you know, you go through the basic process and you build yourself, you know, 30 links in one day, right? Google's not going to find all those links in one day. It's going to find them over a week or two even, and it'll look entirely natural. Again, this isn't, um, we don't have to make this more complicated than it is. Um, the way that we build links in the Crowd Mountain system is natural. Okay, because I didn't tell you guys to go out and buy some ridiculous software. I didn't even give you some ridiculous software that'll build you an insane amount of links immediately. That's not natural, and that's where you get in trouble. The stuff that we're doing here is natural. It's not going to get you in trouble, and you don't have to worry about the speed of stuff. And that's one of the other reasons, too, why software, and I went over that a little bit at the very end of the boot camp module, um, the, the software that you can buy sometimes that, that will build you links can be more trouble than it's worth in terms of setting it up and stuff like that. And I'm having another look at some of those softwares now as they have changed quite a bit. But from what I've seen thus far, they don't really impress me. They don't really save me a whole lot of time. And sometimes they can leave footprints, which can be a problem. But also, um, and I'm not talking about like SE Nuke in particular or anything like that, but certain softwares like the, uh, you know, could go out and build you an insane amount of links very, very quickly, which yeah, could be a problem. Um, what we're doing here in Crowd Mountain is natural, not going to get you in trouble, not something that you need to worry about. So if you go on a blog commenting spree and you spend a couple hours one night leaving blog comments all over the place, don't worry, okay? It's okay. <clears throat> Peggy says, how is 30-minute backlinks different from the link building taught in boot camp? Is 30-minute backlinks product a one-time charge or a monthly membership? It's a one-time product, and we actually talked a lot about 30-minute backlinks in the boot camp module 4 webinar, so if you want to watch that, um, that will give you an idea of, of how 30-minute backlinks works and how to integrate it with what you learn in Crowd Mountain. Victoria, should we use an article spinner? Yes, that's what the, I think, second or third video is about is using an article spinner. So you should be using an article spinner. Uh, Hubpage rejected the spinned article as duplicate. I've submitted to article directories as well. Not sure if they will reject the articles as duplicate as well. If Hubpage has rejected it, and it as a duplicate, um, then you haven't spun your article enough. Or you could just write them their own. But Karam. Karam, I said it right. First try, didn't I? Michelle, does a comment backlink have less strength than a blog roll link or an in-article link? Sometimes I suspect my comment links are not weighing on my search engine rankings. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you that a comment link is not as powerful as another kind of link, but again, it, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great source for links in terms of being another place where you can get links to round out your link profile so that it does look entirely natural. 
Teresa says, thanks for the awesome stuff. Thank you, Teresa. In using Crosslinker, when we are hyperlinking, is it appropriate to link to our product that we are selling? The product I'm selling is set up in a subdirectory of my main site, so the link created with Crosslinker wouldn't go to a post within my site.com, but it would go to my site.com product. No, cross. I mean, uh, no, sorry, I just totally got confused. I was thinking spider snare instead of Crosslinker. Okay, so the product you're selling is in a subdirectory of your site, so the link won't go to a post within mysite.com, but instead would go to mysite.com forward slash product. Yeah, that's fine if you want that product page to rank for your main keyword. If you want one of the posts on your main site to rank for your main keyword, then you'll link to that. So you're going to link to whatever you want to rank. Craig says, would you use anchor text in the link or just the domain name? Anywhere that you can use your anchor text, Craig, you absolutely want to do so. Serenity says that she's starting to get comments and links on her sites. What rules do you follow in terms of which comments and links you'll allow and which ones you won't? Serenity, I pretty much allow anything that makes sense that's relevant to what I've written in my post um, and that contributes to the conversation. I generally will delete a comment if it just has their keyword as their name and doesn't have a name at all, like if it's just, you know, Toyota trucks or, you know, Viagra or something like that, obviously. And then if I see in their URL, even if they didn't um, use a name that was their keyword phrase, but if I see in their URL plainly that it's like spam or porn or something horrible like that, then obviously I don't publish it. Um, but I don't go through and like click on every link that somebody leaves in the comments and, and make sure that it's to an okay site or anything like that. I just give it a cursory glance. Sandy says, how do you leave your link on a comment? Do you put your URL or do a link to a keyword or text? If you do, how do you do HTML in a comment box? Okay, let's go to the eyeglasses.com blog and we'll post a comment for the John Lennon sunglasses. And this is also covered in the videos, Sandy, so you might want to take a look at those. But I'll put, uh, my name is Mandy at John Lennon. That gets my keyword in the, oh, see, these people don't allow an uh, URL. All right, so we'll go back to a different site that had comments, not eyeglasses.com, not these guys. Lookbook, that was a good one. All right, so we want to leave a comment here. Uh, they don't have a place for that for your URL. They might accept HTML in the comment box, but since we're on a live webinar, I don't want to go through the process of finding out. It might be a little bit tedious for you guys. So let's uh, go to this place. Nobody's going to have goggles like these. Simulated snake skin with smoke lenses let you stand out from the rest of the gang while on the road. So I've clicked the comments, post a comment, And we're going to choose name URL. And that'll give us the opportunity to actually put in our name and our URL. So let's do Mandy. At, and I'm just putting Mandy because it's a random name that came to my head. Oops. So now we have a name, right? And, uh, you know, it gives it a, a little bit more personalization to your comment rather than just saying my name is John Lennon sunglasses it's clearly not and then the author will know that I'm just doing this to um, get a link to my site okay we'll continue and then we'll leave our comment now, I don't even have to say anything in my comment about John Lennon sunglasses because it's going to be linked via my name that I already created, Mandy at John Lennon sunglasses. So um, I just, you know, this post is already about sunglasses. It's already relevant enough and I don't need to create more relevancy via by bringing in the main keyword phrase into my comment. I just need to say something about this guy's post. Um, those
sometimes I write a little bit casually in these so that it seems more natural as opposed to those are fantastic glasses I recommend that you purchase glasses such as these to protect your eyesight you know stuff like that that's just kind of weird and creepy so they asked me to do the captcha so I've done the captcha and my comment will be visible after approval. As you can see, some sites obviously approve comments before they publish them, so there we go. Jack says, thanks Michelle, I've been pulling my hair out trying to figure out what these guys were saying. Great answer, I appreciate it. I'm guessing that you were talking about um, the SEO being people making it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but if that wasn't what you were thanking me for, I uh, <laughs> I thank you for thanking me for whatever it was. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Michelle says, when I signed up, I had a, there was a special for 30-minute backlinks. Will I cover it at all? Nope. It's a one-time offer. Karim says, I've had someone offer me $500 to place three anchor text links for a year. Is there a trick here? Am I losing link juice to them? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, any time that you link from your site to another site, then you do end up uh, losing some, you pass some of your link juice on. Um, would I do it? I think is the ultimate question. Um, 500 bucks for three links. I mean, I'd want to see where they go to and what the anchor text is, but yeah, I'd probably do it. What the heck, right? And Karim said that, yes, I finally did say his name right. Jim says, when you go to a site like Weebly and set up a website with a link on the first page, if you add more pages to the Weebly site to add more links, should we link to different sites or to the same site? Uh, you want to go niche right so your one Weebly site that you create is going to be for one niche so if I happen to have a couple of different sunglasses kinds of sites then I might link to those different URLs from my one Weebly site because it's all related it's all about sunglasses different kinds but if I had a sunglasses site and then I had a juice cleanse site for example those aren't closely enough related so I would create a different Weebly site to link to my sunglasses stuff and then I would create another one to link to my juice cleanse stuff. Brett says that uh, something he's noticed is that Google seems to find hub pages comment backlinks very quickly. Paul says any moderator can add you to a spam list justified or not if they suspect a spammer. How do you canter a spam listing so your IP is not tarnished? Uh, you can't but you have to be kind of a jerk off to actually get banned completely um, because it isn't just one person if one person you know marks your stuff as spam in their blog comment area that doesn't mean that you get marked as spam in every single uh, akismet comment area lots and lots of people have to actually mark your URL or your comments as spam before you get blacklisted across the world. Um, it was a little quick. I said, you know, you kind of have to be a jerk off to have that. Ha it does happen occasionally um, without somebody having used automated software or been totally spammy, but that's pretty rare. But once you're on those lists, it's pretty tough to get off. So you can move your site uh, to a different IP address, but sometimes it's done uh, by domain and then your domain you just pretty much can't comment on other people's sites and there's nothing that you can do about it. Peggy says that she loves the extra tools in this module. Thanks. If I missed it in this module, my apologies. Do you show us how to set up and do a squidoo lens and a hub page, etc.? Yes, I do, Peggy. Kim said, is if your main keyword is fairly long, five or six words, would you still put it in the name section for your comment or would it look unnatural and spammy at that point? Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of an example like if it was like sweet red John Lennon sunglasses I you know what I'd still probably do it because that's the main keyword that you're going for and you need to uh, build links with that main keyword phrase in it. That being said, you know, if it is really long, then your comments might not get published as often. Some people might think that it's a little long and ridiculous, but that is the keyword phrase that you do need to be building on, so I would be using that. 
Frederick, how many links do you typically need to get to the number one page in Google? No answer for that, Frederick, unfortunately. I wish there was, but there is not. Why? Because it depends on your niche, it depends on your competition. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to give you an example here. So here's our John Lennon sunglasses stuff. Um, let's go over to John Lennon sunglasses. We're going to look at our SEO competition. Generate results. This will take a second. But, you know, I may be working in a niche where <coughs> the backlinks to the page are universally at, say, ones and twos. Therefore, I may only need, say, 10 links to beat all these people, right? And then they, I may also be working in a niche where the backlinks are much, much higher. And therefore, I'm going to have to build more links to compete with them. So that's the basics of it. But you can see here that the backlinks to the page uh, are all fairly low for this particular keyword phrase, whereas the backlinks to the domain can get pretty high when we get into sites like Amazon and um, even Frames Direct is, is 90,000 Sierra Trading Post. So um, I don't need to get the same number of backlinks to my domain necessarily as these folks do. And what I'm going to focus on is backlinks to the page and beating out what, the, what people have here and then seeing where I end up and going from there. But if we look at, let's say, Aussie sunglasses, let's run SEO competition for that. Okay, so Aussie sunglasses, a lot of these backlinks to the page are at a complete and utter zero. Um, if I just owned AussieSunglasses.com, I'd probably end up on the first page without any backlinks. <clears throat> Sandy, how do you leave HTML in a comment box that doesn't have an HTML interface in the comment box? Uh, sometimes you just write in the code, so a href equals blah blah blah, so you have to actually know the HTML code. Some of them will give you instructions that say to leave a link, you know, use this and it'll be like um, bulletin board code or something like that but you know different sites do it differently so I can't tell you globally that this is how you always do that some won't allow it some will uh, Karim says is there a known scam etc for like uh, people purchasing links on his site um, probably out there there's you know some scammy people but no I mean you know if they give you 500 bucks and they say here's the links I want on the site you put the links on their site I mean don't give them access to your site or anything like that obviously I would never do that um, don't do any weird JavaScript or, or stuff like that that they could potentially change on their back end just you know put on the text links on your site and Peggy says that those snakes and goggles are gnarly I think they are too Karim says, what would I charge for a link like that? Is it a low ball? I really don't know. I don't buy links from individuals. Um, and I don't know, you know, what site this is, what niche this is, what kind of links they want to put on your site, linking to, you know, what's their niche, that sort of stuff. So um, I really can't say what the price for something like that should be. Steven says, I'm surprised that people who've paid for this course haven't watched the weekly videos. This is always good, but the videos are great. Thank you, Steven. Peggy says, you just mentioned losing link juice. Are we losing link juice with the links in PhotoDropper? Technically, yes. Every single link that goes out of your site to another site, you are passing link juice onto that other site. If you never did that, though, that's weird, too. It's unnatural. It's strange. Google doesn't like it. They go, hey, what's that guy up to? So, it's okay. You know, you don't want to have a list of 7,000 links on your page that go out. But it's entirely natural and expected that you're going to have some links that go out of your site. So it's important that you have those. Jeff says, if we accept comments on our posts, do they dilute the keyword density of our post? If there are a lot of outbound links in those comments, will it bleed a lot of authority or ranking? Well, default install of WordPress uses no follow, which as I discussed earlier, isn't as important as it used to be. But it does give the search engines the indication that you uh, aren't interested in passing link juice onto these comment links uh, but 
if we accept comments, do they delete the keyword density? Yes, you know, there are more words on the page. Assuming that the commenters aren't using your main keyword phrase in their comments, then uh, clearly that's going to change the keyword density on your page because that's just a mathematical computation. There's X number of words. How many times did you use your keyword phrase? That gives you your keyword density. So when your commenters add more words to your page and your number of times that you've used your main keyword phrase remains the same, then you are going to end up with a lower keyword density but we don't focus on optimizing to a certain percentage of keyword density because that's weird and it's another one of those SEO things that gets absolutely ridiculous when we're like oh I need a 12.2476 keyword density on my page or I'm never gonna rank right you need to have your keyword on your page probably a few times other than that don't freak out Felipe says, is it normal to say that out of 100 links, only 10 will stick? Don't quote me on the numbers, but do you know why a link will stick, stick and some others won't? Well, Google doesn't report all of the links that it knows about. So you could put 100 links out there and Google will know that you have 100 links out there, right? Um, as far as will they stick or not, I mean, the links are there and the search engines know that they're there. So there's no particular percentage. What they report to us is not accurate it isn't reflective of what they actually know about our sites even Yahoo Yahoo doesn't tell us everything that they know even though they report a lot more than Google it's not everything so um, what we see what they know about are two entirely different things so we can't say oh 10% count or X percent counts because we don't actually know 100% what they know what we do know <laughs> And this is getting ridiculous, but what we do know is that the search engines uh, know of a lot more links than they actually report. Michelle says, when I used Mandy at John Lennon Sunglasses, that isn't a live email address. Does that even matter? Yeah, that wasn't my email address. That was the name of the person who is commenting. So go back and watch the video for Bootcamp Module 5 and you'll see what's going on there. Jack says, uh, yeah, Michelle, I was talking about links in general. It was really pissing me off that they talk about placing links slowly and then recommend that you outsource linking to a Filipino because they can make links all day long, which is kind of a contradiction, or so I thought anyway, and you cleared all of this up. Thanks again. Thank you, Jack. Steve says, do you pay attention at all to the index count column in Market Samurai? Um, you know, I mean, you look at, let's go back over to John Lennon's sunglasses. And you look at Amazon, they've got 85 million pages indexed. Um, you look at BizRate, they have 5 million pages indexed. I have no intention of building that many pages on my site. So when they're all insanely high like that, I don't worry about it. What I do like to see though, um, it won't make me get out of a niche completely, but I do like to see a few sites that have 40 pages, 26 pages, even 900 pages. That's not a huge amount when you have a blog. So or 600. These are all reasonable amounts of pages to have indexed on a site and would make our site comparable, right? Once we build up a few posts on our site, then you consider that there are archive pages and category pages and tag pages and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can end up with a few hundred pages pretty quickly on your WordPress site. And I know now in looking at this that my basic WordPress site of a few hundred pages is going to fall within the realm of acceptable in this niche because we've got super low and we've got super high and then we've got some that are sort of in the middle here. And, uh, and that's what I'll be doing too. So... Um, it does, it's not a make or break issue at all, but it is nice to just kind of take a peek and, and know that you're on the right track. Karim says, Michelle, speaking of SEO competition, how and when should we start thinking about submitting to DMOs, DMOs, DMOZ, however you say that when you actually say it? Uh, I never bother. I've never gotten accepted, even with like, you know, the most awesome white hat sites ever or like my internet marketing blog. Like, you know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to, you know, be like, ooh, I'm Michelle McPherson. But, you know, I mean, I have a name in the industry. It's a legitimate site, you know, and, and they don't approve anything. I think it's all just like backed up and whatnot. So I don't bother. Steven says, what about linkpartners.com or linkmarket.net? Any opinion on using sites like that? Yeah, I don't know those sites. Uh, Tamina says, is it okay to have comments turned off when you have a product-based site or is keeping comments open a good thing? Yeah, that's fine because, you know, there really isn't any reason for discussion when you have a site like... 
the John Lennon sunglasses site and I turned the comments off on this obviously and you guys saw that in the earlier webinar videos but yeah there's no reason to have a big discussion about you know the 10 sunglasses that I should be displaying here based on what we talked about in bootcamp module 4 webinar um, people either like them and they click them and they buy them or they don't so Uh, Steve says, forgive me if you've covered this in the Module 5 videos. I haven't had time this week to watch them. But I have found free article exchange system called bloggerlinkup.com where you can offer guest posts and get guest posts. Do you ever get content for your site by using other people's content? Obviously, they want links to their sites too. Uh, I haven't used that service. I do sometimes accept um, guest posts on like my main site, michellemcpherson.com. Um, my niche sites, I don't really want to take the time to maintain that kind of... Um, involvement with them of, you know, gathering and approving and reading and whatnot of guest posts. Roland says, sorry, this question is for module four. No problem, Roland. Does it make a difference to Google if you use the monetization, generate copy, and publish content mod modules of Market Samurai to set up your monetization ads versus just using the straight code from Amazon or whatever? No, that's all good. Uh, Paul says, are you affiliated with RankPay? Really? I just ran across their site and noticed the logo and expertise are very similar to yours. Regardless, do you recommend a service like that to take your SEO value even further? No, I don't know who that is. No, I don't know who that is. The logo is kind of similar, but... Not uh, not close enough for me to cease and desist. <laughs> Laura says it took my application two years to get picked up by Dimas. Yeah, I've had mine in since two thousand five, so that's where we are. <laughs> Craig says the Spider software is not accepting my Crab Mountain username and password. I have double checked that I am using the right one, but it still says invalid username and password. Uh, go ahead and check out the uh, support desk for that, which is support.revolutiontilt.com. Laura says that the Demos listing did coincide with slightly higher rankings for a number of my keywords, though, so maybe it's worth it. Okay, yeah. Um, I would never say, like, don't do it, but, you know, it's I wouldn't expect any quick results from them. <laughs> Lisa says, with Spider Snare, I didn't understand what the resources section was and how it was used. If you find another site that is like all of the other sites inside Spider Snare, and you have to understand what those are and, and all that. And if you don't, don't worry about it. But if you find another site that does the same things as the other sites in Spider Snare and you want to add to it, you can add to it with the resources section. Any other questions, gang? I've uh, dispelled the SEO myths that upset me and upset you guys the most, you know, because they, they give people a lot of hesitancy and confusion. And the only way that you're ever going to make money in this business is by doing, right? And I see way too many folks who sit around and worry that, oh my gosh, I might not be doing this right. You know, I might, if I leave this link wrong, you know, oh my gosh, I've done it wrong. You know, don't worry about being wrong because I've been wrong a lot and I'm still wrong all the time. I think on the mastermind webinar, you know, I was probably wrong yesterday like four times or didn't know something. You know, I was asked for a particular kind of plug-in. Um, there was an issue with, with like eHow. Um, what did we have the other day uh, that I didn't know? I think it was you, Karim, that pointed it out. But, you know, you can run um, AdSense with other contextual advertisers now. You used to not be able to do that. I didn't know that they changed it yet. Don't be afraid of being wrong because that doesn't mean that you're not going to make money in the business, right? Just be afraid of not doing anything. And if you go out and you do something wrong, you can do it again. It's not going to be the end of the world. So I really, really, really want you to just go out there and just build links, build links, build links. That's what's going to make you money. That's what's going to get you ranked. And the processes that we outline here in Bootcamp Module 5 will help you do that. Uh, Peggy says, question from Module 1. A friend suggested looking into this. Regarding domain hosting, is a shared host okay or should I spend the extra couple dollars to get a dedicated IP address instead of a shared IP? I heard that sometimes you can be on a shared address with spam sites that may get banned, which may ultimately hurt your own site, even if your own site is not spammy. Yeah, that can happen. It's pretty unlikely. Don't worry about it. Nancy says, do you worry about doing any directory submissions? Um, 
the software that used to be available, there used to be like a directory, I don't know, some sort of directory submission software that was supposed to do it for you automatically. That doesn't really work anymore. It hasn't been updated in years. So directories to me are not worthwhile doing unless you can automate it. And right now, I don't know of a really great solution to automate directory submissions. Traffic Bug does some directory submissions, but not a huge, huge, huge amount. Um, so if you have Traffic Bug, you know, you absolutely want to be putting your URLs in it and using it and using their directory submission feature. Um, the best results that I've had with directory submissions are from, I think... Directory Maximizer, maybe? Well, I clearly spelt that wrong. Directory Maximizer. Yeah, I think this is it. Manual Directory Submission Service. So they apparently do this by hand. Um, and I have used this service before, and it is a very good service, and it has made a difference in my ranking. They do go out and actually get great links for you from directories and not just um, not just auto-submission ones, which end up being like spam farms. They actually go out and they put your, your links by hand into directories that you can't submit to automatically. Uh, and like I said, it has made a difference in my ranking. You know, this service does cost, which is why I don't make it part of Crowd Mountain. One of the things that was my goal with Crowd Mountain was to make it um, as complete as possible without your having to go buy other stuff. So if you cannot afford a service like this, it's not the end of the world. And what you want to do is go up to the snooper and find more sites in the snooper to build links on. You're either going to have to pay for your link building in your own time, right, which doesn't cost you any money, but it costs you time, or you're going to have to pay for your link building with money, and either that's software or services like this that will do it for you, or maybe through an outsource or something like that. Um, so this is a great, great, great service for directories, um, and I do recommend it. It is not necessary if you cannot afford it. So don't come off this webinar and be like, I can't afford directory maximizer. I'm never going to rank. Yes, you can. Just go through the snooper and find other sites to build links on. Okay. But if you can't afford it, uh, this is a really great service for directory submissions. Uh... Anne says, thank you for tonight, Michelle. I'm still in module three-ish, but I'm listening as it all comes out and know that I'm going to catch up. Good for you, Anne. Brett says, trial and error is my favorite method of learning. The more I screw up, the more I learn. That's right. Clark says, someone once said, do something. Even if it's wrong, that's how you learn. Just do something. Absolutely. Greg, how about classified ads? Classified ads I definitely wouldn't mess with unless I had some kind of automated software to do it. Oh, this is a great resource. Felipe, nice site that can help people on a budget is Fiverr, which is F-I... F I V E R R dot com. Original and definitely can help some of the members, I believe. Feel free to check it out or talk about it. Yeah, I've seen this before and I think that we spoke about it on internet marketing this week once, but I'm not entirely sure. So here's a bunch of people who are willing to do something for five bucks. And you can go in and say click social marketing. I will ping your site to over 800 statistics sites. I will provide full marketing and media plan. Um, I will get 100 likes on your Facebook fan page with Mexican names. Okay. I will post 100 blog comments with your link for five bucks. Now, I don't know that all of these are necessarily going to be the most honest or legitimate ways to go about business, but like writing, that's a really good one. So there's a lot of people here who will write stuff for you. And these can be fantastic resources. I think I also saw on the front page somebody who would be a virtual assistant. So you could give them a short training on something that you want them to do. Use like um, Jing, J-I-N-G, and get... Um, and uh, make a quick video. Show them what to do and say, hey, go do this. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome site to find people for quick one-off jobs. Programming. Let's see what we've got here. Install WordPress, fix JavaScript, create JavaScript, fix bugs, install and configure WordPress, <clears throat> do your math homework, edit a lightsaber effect into your video. That's kind of cool. 
comment your site name in 50, dollars, 50 blogs with proof. More WordPress installations. So you can find all work on one software project for one hour. So, you know, there's a lot of people here who are willing to do some work for you and this could be a great alternative for smaller jobs when you begin outsourcing or if you just don't know how to do something um, as opposed to going through a whole process with like Rent-A-Code or, or Odesk or something like that. Great site. Thanks for the uh, reminder, Felipe. Peggy says, forgive me, completed module 5, but not the Q&A yet. For friend feed and for podcasts, do we create one account or individual accounts for each site topic? Sorry for bombarding you with lots of questions this week. No problem, Peggy. Uh, if you've got the question, then somebody else does too. So absolutely feel free to fling all of your questions at me. Everybody gains from it, including myself. So uh, friend feed and podcast, same thing as before. Uh, somebody had a question about that for like... Um, Squidoo lenses or Weebly pages, you want to have one per niche, one account per niche. I don't want my juice cleanse and my sunglasses on the same friend feed. I want different ones, right? So, Nancy says, thanks for the directory submission info. Tammy says, with your niche sites that you build a list on, do you use a different mailing address than your main one with your pen name? I know AWeber is very particular in putting your exact mailing address on your emails. So I was just wondering how you dealt with this. Um, I change it. If I'm in a niche uh, and somebody gets the emails about it and whatnot, I know that if it were my actual business address that someone could then find out that I own that niche and then, you know, uh, I don't like my, my, my niche stuff necessarily to be public uh, because people screw with it. So uh, I just make one up and that's probably not what you should do, but that's what I do. Oh man. Jack says, Ed, I'll get to the point eventually. Dale is having a new free for nothing challenge this year on July 1st. Did you learn anything about that in San Diego? That aside, did you find the San Diego trip worthwhile? Uh, love Ed dearly and he has an absolute gift for, for storytelling. Um, the challenge begins July 1st. Yes, I did learn quite a bit about that in San Diego, but um, I'm not sure what exactly I am at liberty to discuss in public. I will say that it is absolutely worthwhile doing. This question came up last year, too. You know, as Ed does his 30-day challenge, um, I had a bunch of Crowd Mountain members say, you know, oh, should we, should we take that or not? Yeah, you know, I mean, you're going to learn... <laughs> You could take the most complete course in the whole world on internet marketing, you know, niche site building like you do here in Crowd Mountain, pay-per-click, blah, 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 copywriting, everything, everything, everything. And you could watch every single video and do everything that you're supposed to do. And then a month later, you could take another course from another guy that actually has some of the same, there's a little bit of overlap, and you could learn stuff from him. So I would never, ever, ever tell you, no, don't take the 30-day challenge because you're mine. <laughs> Ed does fantastic work, and I am going to be um, participating in it with him. I love him dearly. I love the challenge dearly. Um, I love the energy that they bring to this business and to pump people up and everything that they do. Um, I may do things a little bit differently here and there, but you can learn from Ed and, you know, Robert Somerville and Dan Rain and, and the whole team. So yes, take the challenge, enjoy the challenge. You will get some great information out of it that you can gel into what you're doing in Crab Mountain very, very easily. Uh, Michelle says, do you recommend using a service like Unique Article Wizard or Article Marketing Automation? Um, yeah, you can use services like that, and I've discussed that in the archives. If you're an archival member, you can look up those services, and uh, you'll see the discussion that we have. As far as, you know, one's better than the other, blah, 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 I actually like Unique Article Wizard better than Article Mar Marketing Automation. Personally, it gets your links out to more sites. Regardless, um, they all pretty much do the same thing. They all have a network of sites that they can publish to and when you submit your content they publish your content to those sites. Um, is it a bad idea? No. Do I recommend it as part of the core boot camp process? No, because it costs extra money and I again don't want people to think that if they can't afford something like this that they're not going to succeed. It just means that you have to put in more time. But if you do have the money to afford a service like this, yes, they're great services. Edna, do you also do one Gmail and Google account per niche? Yes. 
Brett says, once you have friend feed loaded up with RSS feeds, what do we do with it? Well, uh, in the videos, like in the where we did the Squidoo lens, Squidoo will actually accept. They have a, a what do they call them? They don't call them modules. They have a widget or whatever that you know you put in your RSS feed, and then it will publish whatever's in your RSS feed. So there are sites like Squidoo and Hub Pages and stuff that actually let you put in an RSS feed. So you'd want to put in your friend feed RSS feed there. Teresa says you'll always pick up a pearl or, pearl or two. Always good to learn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lisa says, when will you be doing the revamp series using your husband's sites? Really looking forward to this. Um, let's see what we've got here. This week was super busy because last week uh, I wasn't able to do your guys' webinar. So this week got swamped with you know like constant webinars and and q and a sessions and whatnot um next week should slow down a little bit and actually and then we start outsourcing auto blogging and then email marketing for the rest of june and if you guys haven't seen this by the way for july uh we're going to wrap up the email marketing and then we're going to go into the local seo clinic uh, at the beginning of July there and I know a lot of you guys are waiting for uh, the outsourcing the auto blogging you guys were all about it on our call the other day for the email marketing and the local SEO so we're gonna be delving into that stuff when I'm gonna do the thing with my husband's site let's actually start that next week and I won't put it on the calendar yet because uh, I actually need to talk to him <laughs> I need pictures from him of his art before I can fix up the site so depending on him. I will beat him with a stick if he doesn't get me those pictures, but we will uh, begin that next week. Not really about the beating him with a stick. Paul, what will you teach after boot camp ends? Trying to decide what to do. Uh, as you can see on the calendar, that's what we'll be teaching after boot camp ends. The thing I don't get about Squidoo, this is from Karam. He says, uh, aren't you just competing with yourself? Um, well, any anything that you put out there whether it's Squidoo, a Squidoo lens, a hub pages, a friend feed account, a Twitter account um, those are you build them so that they are targeted for your keyword phrase and therefore they are competing with you but they all point to your site so all of the link juice that you get from the, all of those sites to your main site outweighs uh, those sites themselves uh, as individual pages and brings more authority to your own site Uh, Laura says articleware.com she's used that or no hasn't used it but has seen it and it looks like they have some good testimonials Stephen will basic members be able to get into the local SEO program yeah everything that you see on the calendar is for everybody unless it spe says specifically mastermind right so that's the, that's just mastermind members but everything else auto blogging outsourcing email marketing um, local SEO and the series that we're going to be doing about revamping an old site all that stuff is available to everybody again only if it says mastermind is it only available to masterminders so and that's what you know we, we talked about this a little bit the other day too but you know you get the basic core of how to set up your site how to promote your site how to optimize your site how to create content for your site in the Crowd Mountain boot camp but then what we go into in Crowd Mountain current after your boot camp is done is all of this advanced stuff that you need to take it to the next level and either um, you know work work in more difficult niches or you know to do things like outsource and create a larger empire or same with auto blogging that can help you create a larger empire much quicker so what we talk about in Crowd Mountain Current is this stuff that will take you from being somebody who knows the core principles from somebody or to somebody who can build take those core principles and transform them into an entire cohesive business right and uh, that's why we cover all of these topics in Crowd Mountain Current Mark in step five is it necessary to submit a spun article to all of the sites found via the snooper in other words, would it be disadvantageous to use your primary article for these step five submissions? Well, I mean, you know, if you want to take the time to go write an original article for each one, 
you can. It's not going to give you that much of a boost if you do, and you know, it's a lot faster if you just do the spun articles. So that is what you should do to get the best return on investment for your time. Greg says, do all of those sites count as competition in the results? Yes. Clark wants to know how the clinics work. Going to be different for each one. Some of them are going to have guests. Some of them are going to have some pre-recorded videos. Some of them are going to be live webinar. Some of them are going to be teleseminar. And some of them are going to have several components throughout the week. So, Tammy says, how long past July will we be learning new stuff? Does it end at some point? I hope not. LOL. Awesome info. Thank you so much, Tammy. No, it never ends. That's the great thing about this business and one of the reasons why I love it so much because I'm really like um, committed to and interested in constantly learning and constantly developing myself personally, but also my business, doing better, becoming a better person, becoming more, you know, knowing more about stuff, learning how to do things, um, staying on the edge of what's going on in, in the business. But, you know, I mean, this isn't just in, in business. It's in my personal life as well and things are constantly changing in internet marketing um, you know here we're doing a whole thing on auto blogging last time people talked about auto blogging and they didn't call it auto blogging but the last time that something like this uh, was really talked about was like five years ago in the big old AdSense days when people were building a bunch of automated sites and making tons and tons and tons and tons of money with them and then that fell out of favor and nobody did it and then a few people started doing it, but they didn't really talk about it. And now suddenly it's in vogue again, right? So um, things are constantly changing. And sorry, and because it's in vogue, there's a lot more software and tools than there were, say, six months ago or a year ago to do this kind of thing. So things are constantly changing. Although, like I said earlier, you know, there are people out there who make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. And when I say things are constantly changing, I certainly am not trying to frighten you into saying things are constantly changing and you probably can't understand it. You know, that's not at all what I'm trying to say. But yeah, there's changes in the industry all the time and we're going to be putting out information on those changes um, throughout time so that you guys can stay up to date. Uh, time required per day or will be able to download the videos and audios. Uh, none of the videos on the site are downloadable, Clark. Lisa says, how are the personalized site reviews done for standard membership? Once everybody's done with Bootcamp Module 6, then the site reviews will become available. Why am I doing it that way? Because I don't want to review a site that's only through Bootcamp Module 3, because you should probably just watch Modules 4, 5, and 6 and implement it. And then I could do the review and, and you'd actually get a lot more value from um, the time spent on that review as opposed to giving me an unfinished site. So uh, we will have... Um, uh, link up top somewhere when the site reviews are available. Lisa, how do you keep up with changes in marketing? Any RSS feeds in particular you recommend following? Um, a lot of it is just via experimentation. Uh, some people, and then, you know, you just Google Reader, I read, you know, TechCrunch, stuff like that, see where the industry is going, see where technology as a whole is going, because then that often trickles down into internet marketing, right? iPad right now, big deal. Uh, HTML5, big deal, probably going to trickle down into marketing and strategies that we want to take into account. So those are just some random examples, but uh, I try to keep a bird's eye view of what's going on in the internet world as a whole, and then I consider how that applies to my marketing. Brett says, other sites we make like Squidoo, Hub Pages, etc. might be competing against ourselves, but it's also an opportunity to take up more real estate on the first page of Google. Good point, Brett. Uh, Peggy, question from the previous module. Regarding Google Reader and choosing content, I noticed I'm finding lots of spam sites and sites with viruses and infections. Any way to check those before clicking on them? I've been avoiding the ones that are not .com, .net, .org, and the ones that look like they may be from unknown foreign countries. Not a big deal, just curious, is there a way to check before opening? I don't want to put the links on my site if it's going to cause my visitors problems or frustration. Um... I have like uh, on my PC, I have a piece of software called Spyware Doctor. I think it's 29 bucks and it'll tell me if I click a link that it thinks is bad and it'll block it 
and then I can choose to manually override that if I know that the site's okay. So you might want to look into something like that. Clark says, sorry Michelle, I meant should we plan on spending hours in webinars like this for the clinics? Depends on the clinic. Like I said, you know, some are going to have live stuff, some are not, um, but we are going to be as thorough as possible, absolutely. And anything that we do do live, just like these webinars, will be recorded, so you'll be able to access it afterwards if you can't make the live session. Jack says, Michelle, Jet Spinner is a free spinner. There have been several others mentioned on the Warrior Forum. Rather than discuss all those, you have another spinner that is a purchase software that does a good job in your estimation. Yeah, I like the best spinner. It used to be online, which I liked a lot better. Now it's a downloadable software. I don't like that so much, uh, but it's a very good spinning tool. Nancy says, thanks, Michelle. Your course is providing a great value for us. Thank you, Nancy. Uh... All right, guys. Uh, transcripts of the webinars? No, not at this time. And that's what we've got for today. I thank you guys for attending, and I appreciate your uh, your time. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep up the link building. That is what you have to do to get where you need to be in the business. And when we go into our outsourcing clinic in mid-June, after we finish our boot camp modules, um, we'll talk a lot about different ways that you can get that kind of work done for you so that you can spend your time doing other things, not necessarily on a beach sipping pina coladas, but maybe uh, things like uh, mar researching new markets while your outsourcer goes out and builds links for you in the markets that you're currently in, that sort of stuff. So uh, thank you guys again for attending, and we will talk next week at the Bootcamp Module 6 webinar, which will be on Wednesday. Thanks, guys. <laughs>